This is TK Coleman, and you're listening to another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about demanding respect and inspiring others. Let's dive right in with the first tweet. You can't demand respect and beg for approval at the same time. You can do both of these things, but you cannot do them at the same time. There are two fundamentally different ways that you can walk through the world. The first way is you can carry yourself as if you are someone that has dignity. You can carry yourself as if your life matters. You can carry yourself as if you don't need to apologize for existing. You can hold your head up high and you can walk into a room like you belong there, like your presence actually does and should make a difference. The second way you can walk through life is you can walk with your head down. You can treat other people like they are doing you some kind of favor by talking to you, by being friends with you, by letting you hang around. You can treat yourself as if you are unworthy to pursue happiness according to your own values and so on. Those two different ways of living are diametrically opposed. You cannot have them at the same time. If you are the type of person who begs other people to like you and you need them to approve of you so badly that you're willing to change your beliefs on a dime, that you're willing to throw out your convictions on a dime, no one will ever respect you. People will only respect you if they see that you are the type of person who is willing to live from the core even when it means you get criticized, even when it means you are not liked. Now, sometimes when people hear that word demand, they think that means to threaten or to coerce. When I, when I talk about demanding respect, I don't mean you go around threatening people. I don't mean you tell people that they absolutely have to respect you. When I say demand respect, I simply mean this. You decide what your boundaries are, you decide what your standards are, and you refuse to settle for less And you choose to own the consequences of your refusal to settle. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's say you're in a conversation with someone and the two of you are having a disagreement and you have decided for yourself that one of your standards is you're not going to allow anybody to yell at you. What you've got to realize is the other person in the conversation, they also are a free person and they have the right to yell if that's how they want to communicate. But you have the right to set that boundary, and if that boundary is not respected, you can opt out of the conversation. You can say, hey, I love to continue the discussion with you, but I'm not gonna be yelled at. I'd rather have the discussion in a different way. If we can do that, great. If not, I need to opt out right here and there. And then they can decide if they wanna play by that rule, and if not, you've got your choice before you. But demanding respect isn't about being disrespectful to others. It isn't about threatening others. It is simply about being firm and being honest with what your convictions are, refusing to settle, choosing to opt out in cases where it's not respected by other people, and then owning the consequences because you're not always going to get respect from the people that you request it from, that you demand it from, but you refuse to compromise in order for the purpose of getting along with them. There are many people in this world, they're so afraid of being alone, they're so afraid of others making fun of them, they are so afraid of lacking friends that they are living their lives without a spine. And they will say yes when they really wanna say no. They will say no when they really wanna say yes. And if you live that way, you'll never actually have respect. And ultimately, you'll never have the joy and the inner peace of being able to respect yourself. You don't want that. Choose better. Let's go to tweet number two. Sow seeds of inspiration, but don't try to force the flowers of inspiration to grow. Give others the time, space, and empathy they need to process inspiring ideas at their own pace. Now, let me tell you who this tweet is not for. It is not for the person who says to me, well, TK, I don't use my time to inspire other people. I don't care if other people feel inspired or not. My response to that is totally get it. Good for you. No problem. But the context here has no application to your life. If, however, you are one of those people who finds themselves being frustrated because you're trying to help other people, you're trying to fire them up, you're trying to motivate them, and nothing's happening. They just don't seem to receive what you're saying. Here's what I want you you to understand. You are not here to force the flower to grow. You are only here to sow the seed. You can't force the flower to grow. There's nothing that you can possibly do 
to make people feel genuinely motivated from the inside out by the things that you say. All you can do is put things on their heart and on their mind so that at a later time, when their own experience or their own reflections reinforce the things that you say, they will be able to go back to those things, hopefully, ideally, and say, oh yeah, somebody said that to me years ago. I get it now. There is no substitute for the process of coming to recognize the truth in your own time. Sometimes it can be so frustrating because we feel like our arguments are really good or our quotes are really good or the way we put together the words are really good and we want to just be able to drop it on people and have them say, wow, my entire life has changed because you just went on a riff that was so impressive or so eloquent or so deep or so philosophical. But that is not what produces change. People don't change because of our riffs. They don't change because of our eloquence. They don't change because of the exact way we said the word. They change because there's something that happens in their own experience that causes them to see the truth in a different light and they're ready for the change. Another thing you've got to understand is that when you are influencing people for good, you are really part of an invisible team the other members of which you don't even know. In other words, it's not just the things that you say that might inspire people to make positive changes. It's the things that you say plus the things that people you don't even know also say to them. And there are people who have come before you who have said things that make it easier for them to receive what you're going to say. And then there will be people who come after them, after you, who will say things that make it easier for them to receive what you already said. And so you never know where you fall in that process. You might be in the beginning, you might be somewhere in the middle, or you might be at the end. There's an old saying that one man sows the seed, another man waters the seed, but everyone gets to enjoy the fruit of the blossoming. And so all you want to focus on is representing the truth, representing what you believe in the best possible light. And don't stress yourself out. Don't wear yourself out by constantly fretting over people that aren't getting it right now. Because if you do that, you're not going to find the motivation to be able to show up in season and out of season, day in and day out. Because most days, you won't achieve anything epic. On most days, you don't get a thank you note from someone who says, thank you for changing my life. On most days, you don't get a phone call from someone who thanks you for things that you said to them. On most days, it's just you showing up, doing what you believe in saying what you believe in, and not really seeing any immediate impact. And you have to have the ability to persist through those days. And how do you do it? You realize that you're just a seed sower, not a plant grower. All right, everybody, that's TK's Two Cents on demanding respect and inspiring others. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button so you can stay tuned for future episodes. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to put them in the comment section. I love to hear from you. If there's anything you want to hear me talk about, don't hesitate to let me know. And please share this episode with a family member or friend that might benefit from the ideas. All right, everybody, keep living freely.